Welcome to this episode of Fact Heist. Today we'll try to explain why, sometimes, some people can faint. Fainting or syncope, is, in most case, a fast and short loss of consciousness and muscle strength. Syncope can have several facilitating factors such as, pregnancy, anemia, drugs or medication, but also dehydration, anxiety. My diagnosis is that you've experienced a severe anxiety attack. Going at very high speed. But more often, the person is usually predisposed to decreased blood pressure by various environmental factors. The main reason people faint is because the brain doesn't get enough oxygen, so your nervous system basically goes haywire, mental, crazy. Crazy, crazy, everybody laugh. Your brain needs oxygen, like the device you are watching needs electricity or... Like that. And guess what? This oxygen is delivered to your brain by blood. No kidding. Around 750 milliliters of blood is flowing to your brain every minute. That's an average red wine bottle, and it's disturbing. So obviously a sudden decrease in this oxygen-rich blood flow can have consequences. The symptom of a looming syncope are many, feeling hot, headache, trembling or shaking, <coughs> nausea, <coughs> other symptoms can... <coughs> other symptoms... <coughs> Other other, sim other symptoms can also include, having a flushed or a pale color, feeling dizzy or lightheaded, muscle weakness, trouble hearing, seeing stars aka phosphenes, experiencing a tunnel or blurred vision, I mean a tunnel or blurred vision, sweating, confusion and so on. There are three main flavors of fainting. Cardiac syncope, postural hypotension and reflex syncope. The first one, we won't give too much fucks about, is cardiac or heart-related fainting. They are often caused by abnormal heart rhythm, heart valves or muscle problems and blockage of blood vessels, all of which are stopping the brain from receiving its beloved blood. The second type of fainting, postural hypotension aka orthostatic hypotension aka head rushes when someone, loses blood pressure by standing up from a sitting or lying down position, because, in the whole animal kingdom, humans have the biggest brain compared to their size. The big brain, I'm winning again! I am the greatest! <laughs> Which requires around 20% of the body's blood flow. Then a sudden upright stance can outrun a proper blood flow to the brain. The legs have their share of guilt too, as they collect a lot of blood. That's disgusting. <laughs> I can't take that no more! Just imagine the human body as a column of water. If it gets up too quickly, Laws of gravity will slow down the pace of precious liquid reaching the top. Obviously. <laughs> Calm down for fuck's sake. One can recover easily by lying down, as it sets the heart and brain at the same level. Or by lifting up the legs as it will drain blood to the torso and head. The third type of syncope, is reflex syncope, sometimes named situational syncope, rarely called neurally mediated syncope, but mostly referred as vasovagal syncope is the type of fainting caused by a sudden high stress response. Triggers can range from needle phobia, to sight of blood, many many things. As long as it feels as a threat perception, as the name suggests, vasovagal syncope is related to the vagus nerve, which goes from the brain all the way down to the end of the digestive system. Right up Main Street! As the vagus nerve is part of the autonomous system, it regulates the body's involuntary functions like blood pressure and heart rate, but the vagus nerve has also a weird function, recalibrating or setting back to normal, the body after a fight or flight response. The fight or flight response, aka the survival mode, is an extreme emotional state happening when the brain perceives something highly disgusting, unpleasant, shocking but mostly threatening. This state starts a cascade of physiological reactions like the release of stress hormones, cortisol and epinephrine, which will then accelerate your heartbeat, constrict your blood vessels, Increase blood pressure and send more oxygen-rich blood to your brain and muscles. Now your body is ready for this so-called fight-or-flight response state of mind type of shit. So you can either FIGHT or When the stressful situation is over, is the very moment the vagus nerve tries to restore a physiological state of equilibrium. It slows down the heart, dilates open blood vessels and sets blood pressure back to normal. But sometimes this recalibration can go over the top. The vagus nerve can indeed overcorrect and heart rate and blood pressure can drop too low, resulting in a sudden interruption of blood flow to the brain, which will almost instantly switch off the body's computer. So there's a loss of muscle control and then the infamous blackout happens. That's my favorite part, fainting and not knowing where and how you land.
Some lucky people can also experience a loss of bladder control. Actually that would be my favorite part. My fave. <laughs> Hopefully this loss of consciousness runs off within a matter of seconds because the vagus nerve corrected, once and for all. This error so heartbeat and blood pressure can now go back to normal. You recover consciousness, open your eyes, color begins to return and then you can start looking for wounds or injuries due to the fall. To sum this up, the brain perceives a threatening stimulus. It engages the infamous fight or flight response you are now familiar with. So the heart will beat faster and send more oxygen rich blood to the brain and muscles to enhance efficiency during this stressful event. When danger is over, I am the danger. The vagus nerve can, sometimes, slow down heart rate and blood pressure way too much resulting in a sudden blood drainage of the brain. Then the brain, hence the body will switch off. Was it clear enough? You understand me? And that's it for this episode of Fact Heist. I hope you enjoyed what you watched. So when you see, what you see, is what you get, is what you see, is what you get, is what you see, is what you get. Don't forget to like and subscribe or I kill you. Thanks again and see you next time. Meow.